Hi, my name's Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Video Adrenaline. We're going to explore quick tips for getting more out of Adobe Photoshop and After Effects. Today, we're going to explore Film Look, but instead of doing it in After Effects, we're going to use Photoshop Extended. Now, if you have Adobe Creative Suite 5, you've got Photoshop Extended. It's included in the box, and it opens up the ability to work with footage files right inside of Photoshop. It's quite easy. All you do is choose File Open, and you can navigate to a movie clip. So you just pick any clip you want, go on out to your folder, and bring that on in. And when you click Open, it'll bring it in, recognize any pixel aspect ratio, and you've got a clip. Now by default, it's going to look like a still until you bring up the timeline so you can see what's happening. Easiest way to do that is choose Window, Workspace, Motion. And you might need to choose to reset that workspace to get things back in their default position. Once you've done that, you've got an actual timeline that you could drag through and start to modify your clip a bit. And you see that works pretty well. Now let's jump over to this other clip, which is a little flat. And what I want to do here is really just sort of punch it up a bit. I'm going to go ahead and minimize the clone source and make more room for layers. The first thing I do is choose Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. Now what we're doing here is turning the video clip into a smart object. It sticks a copy of the video file inside the smart object, enabling smart filters. These are non-destructive filters, so you can modify a clip just like After Effects. Of course, Photoshop has different filters as well as some other cool adjustment layers that really open things up. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And first thing I'm going to do is apply a blur. Filter Blur, and we will do a box blur. Now this is a nice sort of square shaped blur. Gives us some nice sort of blending there. It doesn't get all soft. Rather, we've just sort of pushed things out a bit. I'll click OK. Immediately after running that, I could double click this little blending arrow here and change its mode. So we'll go with soft light, and we could back the opacity of that off or perhaps multiply and darken things down a bit. And that's actually looking pretty good there. So let's just back the opacity off to taste, and we could toggle that off and on with the preview, and we see that we've got a nice richening of the color there, so I'll click OK. Another cool thing inside of Photoshop is the use of photo filters. So we'll click the Adjustment Layer button and choose Photo Filter. And I'm going to go ahead and cool this shot down just a little bit. You see it changes the time of day, or warm the shot up. And it nicely brings out the richness there in the reds and the greens. That's looking pretty good. While we're in the Adjustments panel, let's go ahead and also toss on Vibrance. And the advantage of Vibrance is it boosts all of the non-skin tones. So we get nice richness there and put a little saturation in too. Notice there how it's controlling the color. I'm going to back that off so the green's not quite so intense. That's looking pretty good. And I'm happy with that. We also can go ahead and paint on any of those adjustments with a mask. So if I didn't want to affect that tree as much, we could just select the mask right there, and with our paintbrush, load up the default color of black, and just paint right on the mask. As you see there, so the vibrance isn't as affected. Now what I would recommend is with that mask selected, apply a nice gentle blur so you don't have any hard edges. And if we really feather that out, you get nice gentle transition there, and that's working really well. Notice that the sky is affected, but the tree itself is not with that gentle mask, and that's working out nicely. Now to finish this film look out, I need grain and a vignette, both easy to create. Let's just make a new layer. And we'll press Shift Delete to bring up the Fill dialog box. And I'll fill that with 50% gray. Now I'm going to go ahead and run some noise. And we'll add noise in. Looks good. Blur that just a little bit. And blend that going with something like soft light. And you see we get a gentle grain structure being added into the image there. To finish out the vignette, we'll just add a gradient layer. And we'll go with a radial gradient. We could adjust the size and the angle. 
And all those things should always get set to multiply. You don't want to just drop a shadow on, you want to multiply it. So with a vignette, that's a much better blending mode. And we can adjust that to taste. Now at this point, we've finished up our film look and it's good to go. You could render right out of Photoshop, but what I find is that that's a little slow because you have to go one clip at a time. You would choose File, Export, Render Video, and you go through the settings and you put one clip out at a time. A better use is to batch render inside of After Effects. Here's how that works. I'll simply save this file and let's just save it back to the folder as a Photoshop document. And when we do that, what's going to happen is all the layers are going to remain intact and it's going to store this in there. I could then come on over to After Effects and bring it in, grab that PSD file, and import it as a composition. Now when we do that, it brings it in with those layers intact. Notice there that the filter is actually working and that's happened is that all the layers are intact. We can go ahead and simply add that to the render queue and batch process. If you need to, you can also go ahead and further affect it, adding any additional filters here in After Effects. So there you have it, one more way that Photoshop Extended and After Effects can work together. We'll explore processing video clips in greater depth in some of our upcoming episodes. For Creative Cow, my name's Rich Harrington.